Hello, it's Leah from Scraptastic Patchwork. And today we are on episode four of my fabric, de stash, and reorg the hoard series. So if you are unfamiliar, please look at the description box below and get caught up in this series. So episode four is all about my fabric scrap management system that I've come up with. So that is sorting, that is what I'm keeping, what I'm selling, what I'm going to be cutting my scraps into, and um, all that good stuff. And again, if you remember up till now, it's only been about quilting cottons. So that's all I've been dealing with. Now, there are some designers that I have a little bit of an issue with in a good way for them, bad way for me. Um, I love Kaif Facet. I love Alexander Henry. I love Tula Pink. I love Amy Butler. I love Tim Holtz. And so you will see my little mini hoard of Tim Holtz fabric and some projects that I have made with that fabric. And you will understand when you make things with that fabric. Oh, it's beautiful. Beautiful. Um, and so again, we're going to, I'm going to show you kind of my system, my sorting technique, what I'm, types of things I'm selling uh, on my eBay site. I've decided to just do it on eBay for now. In the future, if you're watching this in the future, check out my website, which currently I'm still working on. But I will probably eventually have uh, these little scrap packs, patchwork packs or bundles that I'm going to be offering. I love how I'm doing this and I think it's going to be a really fun little amount of fabric and you'll be amazed at how many things you can make with it. So I'm going to show you this that footage first and then I'll come back and discuss a few other really fun things. This is my huge stack of Tim Holtz fabric. I don't know if you know who Tim Holtz is. He primarily does mixed media supplies, scrapbooking, but he also does fabric. And I found him when I was looking for fabrics for and to design um, a quilt for my niece and she wanted kind of steampunky elements in it. And I came across his fabric and I just loved it. So he's got steampunk stuff like clocks and things of that nature. And then he also has hipster stuff and um, vintage things, prints, newspaper print like this stuff, um, kind of like scientific, like this butterfly and moth, technical terms for them, um, maps like this, uh, here's some old ruler print. Just some really fun, I think this is like Scrabble board, I don't know, um, advertising things. So it's, it's a real eclectic mix of, I think this is like old map, street stuff. So if you kind of want an eclectic looking, vintagey kind of project, this is awesome fabric for that. So I'm a little addicted to it and I've been making tons of stuff out of it and this is what I have left. I think I'm really going to have a hard time purging any of it. <laughs> uh, so anyway, in addition to that, I wanted to show you what I have purchased for this project. Just these two things. I wanted to not invest in too many things while I was doing this because I have a lot of containers and baskets and things like that. I just didn't think I needed to spend any money to get organized. But since I did relocate to my dining room, it was just going to be easier to do a tiny little iron like this. And I can't tell you how much I love it. It is wonderful. And it's a steam iron and it's the brand is steam fast. And I think I got it on Amazon for like 20 bucks. And then this wool pressing mat is, um, I think the, the brand is Nido or Nido or something like that. I can put the links down below. But it's New Zealand wool 
this one that I got is 17 by 17. I don't think you would have to have one this big. They sell smaller ones, but it's really nice and very mobile because then I have my, my little cutting mat, rotating cutting mat that that's all I've been using. So when you're trying to sort your scraps and trying to cut things, obviously you need to press them because there's it's impossible to cut when everything's all wrinkly. So I just wanted to show you those two things, or three things, Tim Holtz stash, cute little iron, and my pressing mat. So cute. So after two and a half hours, I have reduced that huge pile of Tim Holtz fabric to these five stacks and I pressed them all so I found some half hexy pieces which are nice and I will make something of that and I have some patchwork pieces and then I have three stacks of various size scraps some are just like two to four inch pieces and some are longer strips. So what's interesting is when I first looked at that big huge pile, I really didn't think I was gonna be able to sell any of it. But what makes this process worthwhile for a lot of different reasons is psychologically, I think when you look at something like that, you think it's kind of, it gets, kind of messy in your head. <laughs> so it's hard to really think about what the practicalities are of it. So when I have now spent this time with it and touched every single piece, now I can let it go. So I'm just gonna keep, you know, I'll probably keep my patchwork pieces because I've already put the work in for those. And then I'll probably keep these half hexes because I've already cut those. And then maybe some chunks of my favorite prints in these three stacks. But otherwise, I think I'm going to uh, sell those. So again, I'll do the six ounce bundles. And so they will make some nice log cabin I mean, many other kind of blocks, but I just, when I'm making the stacks of six ounces, I think of making sure that I have big enough pieces to be able to make a log cabin block. So that's why I keep saying log cabin, because I think as long as I can justify making a few or more blocks of those with the pieces I am putting in that bundle, then smaller pieces of fabric would be great too. So, and I think when I, I'm going to make a video of just how many log cabin blocks, maybe like a 10 inch log cabin block with that six ounce bundle. And I think I'm going to do it from these fabrics because we have a, a huge variety of different prints and they're so fun to look at. So I think that will be a fun video to make. So anyway, just an interesting uh, little psychological thing that just happened. You take a big, huge mess of a pile thinking that you're not going to get rid of any of it. And now it looks like I'm getting rid of more than half <laughs> just by going through that process. So that's pretty cool. This is a tie that I made for my husband a while ago right after I got this fabric this is also Tim Holtz just wanted to show you one of the projects I made with this awesome fabric and this was before I did I made a traditional style so I just did the flip me method I attached this home decor fabric to the back so now I do ties that have a seam down the middle but it works just fine but it's one of my favorite ties I think that I made for him because I 
just love to all to fabric. This is my sorting process. So this is my scraps that I have piled in the middle, significantly reduced so far, so I'm very happy about that. But what I do is I quickly go through and I take out anything that's smaller than an inch, unless it's a strip of say 10 inches or more. Then I put that in my keep bag, which is right here. But anything else other than those strips go into this little bag and I use that for stuffing or for fabric art or something. Anything that I feel I can let go of goes into this bin. And as I said, anything else goes into this bag here to later be pressed and cut into my new scrap system. Okay, people, this is my scrap management system. So if you remember a couple episodes ago, I discussed the eight categories I was going to put my scraps into. So this is what we have, I have decided. So we've got 10 inch squares, in other words, layer cake squares, up to fat quarter size. So it doesn't have to be just that 10 inch square size. If it's bigger than that, if it's a longer strip, then I'm just gonna leave it as is uh, in case I need to use it for a 12 inch or a 14 inch or whatever. So that's the first, the, the biggest size. And then we have charm pack size or five inch square size. And then we have a scrappy quilt size, and that is three and a half inches by two inches. And this is just a, a quilt that I've been wanting to make, and I'm going to use it kind of as my memory quilt for either the last six months or once a year, something like that, where I just have a whole bunch of scraps from different projects that I make, and then I will have that quilt for for me to remember all those projects. So that's what that size is about. And then we have postage stamp size quilt squares. I'm doing two inches, but I'm also doing inside of that basket is um, a little bag for one inch. Actually, it's one and a half inch squares to do a really crazy one inch finished size postage stamp quilt. So someday in the future, I will do that. But for now, I'm gonna do two inch squares. And then we have what I'm calling my four patch size, which is two and a half inch squares. It doesn't have to be used for, for four patch, obviously. It's just a common size that I use. So I thought I'll just name it that so that I remember. And then we have um, two inch, and two and a half inch strips. And that's used for binding, um, sashing, and obviously if I have jelly rolls that I purchase, then all that will go in there. I, for my binding, I tend to be like a four and a quarter, or excuse me, a two and a quarter inch. I like to do two and a quarter inch binding. Sometimes on mug rugs, I go two inch. So that's why I have the two inch to two and a half inch. And also, if I'm gonna do like a strippy quilt of some sort, then I have those two sizes that I can use. And then we have strips that are a half inch to one inch. And that those strips need to be at least 10 inches, maybe 12 inches and or more for fabric rope that I like to make. And then we have salvages. So that's just obviously what it is, salvages. So those are my eight categories that I am now 
going to be maintaining all my scraps into and for right now I'm just going to do a little bit at a time as far as the scraps I already have I need to press them and cut them into any of these sizes and the way I do it is I kind of just in intuition tells me because of the type of fabric it is or excuse me the print it is if I like it a lot where I want to see it what I will be cutting that into <clears throat> so some fabric I might keep and this is what I ended up with this is my bag of scraps that I'm keeping this is the little tiny bag that has the two pieces that are way too small for anything to sew together so that'll be for as I said either stuffing something or I can use it for um, like just doing fabric collage or something like that um, and then this is what I ended up with as far as what I'm going to sell is this bin so now I have to decide if I'm going to wash it all as one big thing in like a lingerie bag or something it's so hard to decide because I know that it would be a good thing to do because of my cat or I could just disclose that my cat did spend some time on it <laughs> I don't know I have to decide so that is uh, my system my fabric system scrap system that I'm going to be implementing now so if I were to go through all of my scraps and press them and cut them and put them in these little baskets it would take me forever so I think what I'll do is as I go forward in this process now of my whole reorging my hoard I'm just gonna do like an hour a day and maybe by the time this whole thing is over I'll have made it all the way through but there you go my eight baskets oh and also these little signs that I have on there these labels are temporary once I kind of feel my way through this and, and go forward in making projects and these all make sense to me then I will make permanent really cute signs but for right now I, I wasn't sure if this, this is the final sizes I was going to for sure keep so there you go fabric management this is the little bag that I keep when I was sorting if you remember I was putting little pieces of fabric in here that were too small to sew so they would be used for and too small to make fabric rope with so they'd be used for stuffing or uh, projects where I can just do stitching with fusible on top like fabric collage and I wanted to show you what normally happens when I'm at my sewing machine so I'm down in my sewing room again if you can see here I put some of my things I've already done away so I wanted to show you what normally happens to my to those sizes I have yet since I've been sewing professionally I have yet to throw away a tiny even little tiny scrap of fabric and it's not overwhelming if you have a purpose for those things so this is what normally happens they get put in this sorry for the mess all around it but you know haven't gotten to the rest of the sewing room but this is a hamper that my mom gave me this is one that we used for a long time when I was growing up anyway I usually put a and you can't see it right now because it's smooshed down in there but I put a pillowcase in it and that is what I use to put those little pieces in there's a couple pieces that are a little bit bigger that got in there but I also put my thread so this is my thread keeper and my little tiny 
scraps that I use. So as I said, they're really good for stuffing and I've stuffed some of my dolls with this. I've stuffed pillows, but most importantly, pet beds are really good to, as long as your material, your out, outer case is strong and sturdy and they won't be able to shred it and your seams are really nice and sturdy as well. So make sure that if you do make a pet bed that they can't, even for the most crazy dog, they can't get through. So it's a great, as, as long as you're making sure that you're not doing any pins in this or needles, you gotta make sure you're, this is only thread and little pieces of fabric. I also do little pieces of batting as you can see. So that's what I do. And then I pull out that pillowcase and put it aside for projects. But one thing I need to do now, this is kind of, I think this is the second one this year that I've filled. Um, Darlene, my friend, has introduced me to the love of selvages. So I need to go through these now and pull out some of those selvages that are really cool. I won't be doing all of them because that would be, that would take too long, but some of them. So this was the original pet bed that I made for my dog, Jackson. Um, sorry, it's a little, I haven't pulled it out from under my bed in a while. So it's a little emotional since he has soon he has passed, but <clears throat> the cats use it now um, from time to time. They're interested in it right now because it's in a different place than it normally is. But I made this out of a, an old blanket and all my scraps for that year went into it to stuff it. So they really do make great pet beds. Okay, I can't look at this anymore. So yes, that was my little Jack, and I loved him very much, and I miss him very much. But I wanted to kind of, in addition to telling you that pet beds are just a great way to use your fabric scraps, especially the little ones, um, the other reason I bring him up <clears throat> is because he was actually what inspired me to, in a way, it's what caused my husband to inspire me to start making patchwork dolls. And I'm gonna do a, a whole video on that later um, to explain why and, and that whole process. But I wanted to introduce you to Travis. This was the very first doll that I ever made when I started making them. And I've changed my whole process and, and pattern and everything. Um, but he's my little mascot and since he was my first one, um, you'll probably see him quite a bit in my videos because he keeps me company. So this is him with his little patchwork uh, scarf and his cute little shoes. I had fun making him. And he's got a perpetual hug going on here. And he only has one ear because the other one he injured, so he doesn't have it. So, and he's got his cute little braid. So anyway, you'll see Travis later. And as I said, I'm gonna, in another video, I'm gonna talk about the importance of, of why I make patchwork dolls now. Okay, so the other thing I wanted to talk about, again, I wanted to revisit the um, scrap packs that I'm making to sell. Um, this is what they look like. This is one of the Tim Holtz ones. And see, you can tell, I mean, this is packed really tightly, but that's a lot for six ounces. Of fabric and I make sure that I'm doing big chunks in there um, and if you're watching this when I'm when I've uploaded this so this is uh, February 2nd I think um, 2020 I am going to be recording next week so it'll come out Wednesday so second third fourth fifth it'll be out February 5th um, I'm gonna do a tutorial using this pack and I came up with a really cool project um, just to illustrate how much you can make with this little tiny pack of fabric. And I'm gonna do a giveaway because I'm nearing 500 subscribers and I've, I just started my channel last month and I'm just so excited 
that I have that many subscribers and I obviously I want to grow but for right now I'm really happy and so I thought I would do a little giveaway um, I'm not gonna tell you what it is yet you'll have to watch Wednesday's video and I'll probably in the future if you're watching this that giveaway will be over but um, I'm gonna do periodic giveaways, so stay tuned you know don't worry you won't be left out because I I have I have a lot of fabric and I have a lot of fun things that I make so I, I will never run out of things to give away so uh, next week as far as this series goes these uh, I'm having come out on Sundays so next week is going to start home decor and let me tell you I have a ton if you thought I had a lot on this table in this series nothing compared to the home decor but it's gonna be fun because they're gorgeous fabrics and I have lots of fun ideas for a new scrap system for those as well as some management of what scraps I have already I'm going to make these really cool projects with them and of course I'll probably do some packs to sell of those and I'll show you and I, I will also be showing you the other two areas that I've talked about in previous episodes that I have this stuff stashed in. So I'll show you that too. So stay tuned for that. Please subscribe. And so you don't miss anything. See ya. Totally forgot to mention that I have those scrap packs on eBay right now. So look at the link below. It's, I have a few of the Tim Holtz fabrics to uh, sell as well as sorted other all kinds of cool colors and prints all together in those six ounce packs so check out the link below in um, the description and you can get yourself one or two or six